Okay, let's take a look at data science with Linux. Now, I'm going to do this on a laptop that is specifically designed to have a Linux distro or Windows put on it. Lenovo was kind enough to let me use a P53 laptop to demonstrate a kind of a series of videos. We'll be doing a number of things with NVIDIA Rapids and the NVIDIA data science pipeline that's already built into this. So the advantage of this sort of a computer is you're buying it with the Linux distro already installed, all the NVIDIA drivers installed. This computer has 32 gigs of RAM and a Quadro 5000 GPU. So it's, it's ready to go as a data science platform. Now, what you might look at this sort of a machine for, I'll probably do another video looking at cloud versus buying this sort of a machine costs, but looking at figuring maybe around $4,000 for this sort of computer and looking at even modest AWS on-demand costs, you can pay for one of these guys in under two months. I have the exact calculation, just rough calculation right here. We'll look at this in a much more detail in another video. Now this laptop is this is an engineer's laptop. This is a data scientist laptop. This is a laptop like you might see in a Fortune 500 company like I work at. I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I'm a vice president of data science at a Fortune 500 company. This is the kind of computer that I would use in that environment. Not something like this machine you see here that I built that security probably would not even allow in the front door. In fact, I know they wouldn't. Even as an individual researcher or other, you might consider this sort of a laptop as just something very pre-configured. Now, this is not a thin ultralight laptop. However, it does have a full complement of ports. You don't have to carry around these kind of things like I do with my stylish ultra thin laptop kind of as the laptops get thinner the dongle bag gets bigger so this is this is a decent sized laptop it's quite expandable you can actually replace the battery you can replace the RAM these things are not soldered directly onto the motherboard like the more sleek disposable sort of computers. This can be supported by a help desk and it's really a very solid, nice computer. I also like the, the keyboard. It's substantial. I've, I've had other computers with the more butterfly style keyboards back into the shop a couple of times fixing the just constant plague of sticky keys. This is a tactile keyboard. It uh, feels very nice. It also has the full numeric keypad. That can be, you either love that or you hate that. It does cause the keyboard to be off center, but there are some software applications that I use, particularly in numeric fields, where that keypad is, is quite useful. So if you're looking for a thin, sleek, lightweight laptop to impress the hipsters at Starbucks with, this is not your option. However, if you're looking for a desktop replacement that you can use in the comfort of your family room and take it around the house with you or around the office with you and still have all that power, this is probably a really good option. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. So this computer is from the P-series of Lenovo ThinkPad. There's a couple of different models, and this series is very much right in a stage of transition as of September 2020. Let's scroll down and have a look at the various models. Now, these prices are as of the date of recording, so these will change and fluctuate. The P53 that I was showing you just a moment ago it is currently in clearance and they're moving to the to the P15 seems to be the most direct successor to the P53 and then there's also the P1 that is near as i can tell the third generation this is the slimmer option for the more powerhouse P53 and we'll take a look at those two specifically since these are on clearance, you can definitely see some price 
advantages here if you look at these. The P53 that I will be using for this series of videos, I believe most closely aligns with this one here. You can mix and match the components, so it may not be an exact, an exact match, but the specs here line up to the one that I'm looking at. You've got the 12 cores, you've got, obviously I have a different operating system, I have Ubuntu, 32 gigs of RAM, the one terabyte SSD. This is very important. The NVIDIA Quadro 5000 with 16 gigs of RAM will definitely be making use of that in this series of videos. And one thing that is nice about this laptop is it does have the full complement of ports. You've got HDMI, you've got regular USB, also the Thunderbolt, USB-C as well. I have used thinner laptops, but I always have to bring a bag of dongles along to plug into the projectors or to USB drives or other things such as that. So this is what you see when you log into it. This is a normal Ubuntu desktop. Most of what Lenovo has added on top of Ubuntu is really behind the scenes. It's not like they added a lot of the normal sort of bloatware that you might see on just off-the-shelf computers that you buy from many vendors. They've installed all of the drivers, they have installed the necessary things to make sure that all the little lights, bells, and whistles on the laptop actually work. This is one source of frustration I know I've had with setting up Linux laptops before, mapping the various function keys, the little FN and then the, the actual computer function keys like volume increase, volume decrease, mapping those so that they're doing exactly what the actual laptop does that you've now installed Linux on top of Windows can be challenging. So the first thing that I will do, this is exactly as the computer comes from Lenovo, except I have added a little text file there where I'm putting notes on as I, as I start to do this, but I have really not configured very much at all. Let's take a look just at the overall specs of the computer. System monitor or top is always good ways to do this. We'll look at system monitor. You can see here it it's showing the file systems. That's not as as interesting, but it's the way that it's set up. Processes that are that are running, usually lots of those. Resources. Here you can see all the CPUs. And by the way, these colors don't particularly mean anything in Ubuntu. They're labels so that you can tell which processor is which up there. Normally when I pop this open on Ubuntu, I see all the reds and I think that means temperature or something like this. These are all of the processors running as the computer's going. You can see I have the 12 processors. Now this is an Intel, so it's six actual cores, 12 threads total. All right, the next thing I want to do is it's, it's Linux. You gotta go to the command prompt, or as they call it in Linux, the terminal. First thing I wanna do is just see that the NVIDIA chip is responding, the GPU, the Quadro 5000. NVIDIA SMI tells you that really quickly. You can see here we've got the Quadro 5000, RTX 5000, and we've got the 16 gigabytes of RAM. We also have Docker and even NVIDIA Docker. All these are completely installed and ready to go. I will probably at some point do a tutorial video on showing how to get the GPU drivers, NVIDIA Docker, regular Docker, all of this going just to the point that this computer is already shipped to you. And that, believe me, that takes, that takes a while. And there's a lot of complexity to that. If you've seen some of my other videos showing how to install GPUs on systems that I've just built. This is definitely one of the advantages of this in a corporate environment. You can hand this out to your team of data scientists and everything is really pretty much ready to go. Sometimes I will also use the top command just to show me some, in a more character old school oriented way, the performance that the computer is under. Now Docker is installed on this and really the approach that Lenovo is taking with this, and this is how I typically set my computers up as well. You've almost got two levels. You've got the host or the bare metal. This is in the environment that I'm in right now. 
the things that I will install bare metal or into the host environment are really my user productivity tools. In this case, LibreOffice, anything that I need for video conferencing, um, Slack, things like that might be good to install out here. Most of my development data science productivity, I'm usually running that through some sort of a Docker interface. The reason that I do this is I will be using different versions of things like TensorFlow, PyTorch. They may have different needs as far as the CUDA drivers for the NVIDIA. So isolating that all inside of Docker or some containerization or even Minaconda or Anaconda virtual environments can be a good way to go. Although the virtual environments, while they can capture the drivers, they can't really capture the entire state of the machine. So the way that this Lenovo is set up to do this, and this is all open source, you can set up any machine that you like this way. You just have to go through figuring it out for your individual computer. They give you this nice text file here on the desktop, and I've been working through this a bit just to take it through the its paces. You have the, it's based on the NVIDIA data science distribution. This is a slightly older version of it, 2.0.0, just installed on this image on the Lenovo. This is one of the first things that I will be doing is probably upgrading that to, I think the current version is 2.4. But this is something produced by NVIDIA. It's open source. You can go to the GitHub repository for it. I'll put a link to that in the video description. And it lets you run these very easy commands down here, like to set up the user account. You use this NVIDIA data science, set up system, set up user. This was already pre-installed for me on the computer. I did have to run this part for it to work, but this, automates the process of creating these Docker images to then launch a Jupyter Notebook for you to work with. And you can work with everything right, right in here. You can also go with your own workflows as well. One of the things that I like to often use is VS Code. You can set up this defining your own environment, or you can run your own Docker images as well. But I try very hard, and I can see this is the approach Lenovo is going with this, to not pollute, maybe too strong of a word, the host bare metal environment with all the various drivers and machine learning libraries and all of these things, because you're, you're going to have a bit of a nightmare keeping all those versions up to date and not conflicting with each other. Some of your code may be using older CUDA drivers and just supporting multiples of these environments without some sort of containerization can be difficult. I'm gonna show you a little bit of how you actually make use of this. So to actually run the container, and there's several steps here. You build the container and you run the container. You can have multiple environments defined, but you have to pin one of them. And the process of pinning an environment, you just run a NVIDIA data science command, pin, and then the environment name. I'll probably do an entire video just on the NVIDIA data science pipeline because it is really pretty useful for this kind of thing. But pinning it is kind of like doing your conda activate where you're choosing which of these environments is the current one. So let me open up my terminal prompt here that I previously had open. And I'm going to do the NVIDIA data science. If you just run the command like this, it gives you help. And you can see the various commands that you have here. Now this is running the one that, the, that came with the Lenovo. I'll be updating this soon. And then you do run container. And you can see it's starting up here. And now it's up, so you're able to access this with Jupyter using the Chromium browser, in this case, since I'm in Linux. Okay, localhost 888. And here you're in this environment that they have set up here. They have several sample notebooks that you can make use of. You can also just create your own Python 3 environment, which is what I'm doing here. I'm gonna pop open another tab. If I go to Jeff Heaton GitHub, those of you that have gone through my 
online course on my YouTube channel know all about this. The very first notebook, I have some code that I always like to use to run in a new environment. Now my course mostly focuses on TensorFlow, so I'm, I'm querying it for the latest versions of TensorFlow. And also checking to see that the GPU is active. Paste that in there, run it. Now this is all running in that Docker container. Now there's some warnings that TensorFlow, especially the 1X series of TensorFlow, really seem to have a lot of from time to time. So this is using TensorFlow 1.14. So this is a 1X version of TensorFlow. It's definitely something I will be upgrading before the next video. Using a pretty late version of Python 3.7. TensorFlow doesn't support eight yet as of the recording of this video. And the GPU is available. And that's just glorious that I have not had to do any driver configuration, anything. This thing is just out of the box, ready to get to work. Definitely what you're looking for in a corporate environment where you you want the data scientists to have high-powered machines. Maybe they're now using them enough that it is cheaper to have high-powered laptops and desktops other than just running cloud resources constantly. That's really kind of the, the sweet spot that this line of computers is targeted at, like I showed you earlier on the the chart, at least my rough calculations of cloud costs versus return on investment for this, this type of a computer. So at this point, it's pretty much ready to go with this, this notebook. I could do really anything that I wanted to. What they really intend for you to do in the NVIDIA data science pipeline is to go in and create your own environments. And the way that this works is I'm gonna open up another terminal so I can leave that running. User local bin, I think is where this usually goes. You can see, yeah, that's the NVIDIA data science pipeline there. That's the executable for this. Now this only works really in a Linux environment. That executable is basically a shell script and they are working on making it compatible with WSL, but this, all of these tools are very much Linux first. So that is why it's really nice to have a Linux oriented laptop that is very powerful and gives you access to this Linux operating system. I mean, things like NVIDIA Rapids, which I am also going to be doing a video on, you just can't use that in Windows. There's initiatives to make things like the NVIDIA Data Science Platform and Rapids compatible with Windows, but those are ongoing. And as of the recording of this video, WSL is, and that's the Windows uh, subsystem for Linux, that's the closest you can really get to it. But configuring that and getting an NVIDIA card recognized in it can can take a while. I've got an entire video just on how to do that. This is out of the box, ready to go. So I'll show you one thing real quick. I'm going to run a Docker image that I have available on Docker Hub just to show you that I can run something completely outside of the, the workflow that NVIDIA has laid out for you. So this is all very open. You can run just about anything. This is a machine learning program that I wrote some time back that basically looks for cellular automata to find interesting patterns, kind of like Conway's game of life. I can run it. It does use all the CPU cores, so it's a good example for that. I am running right now, mapping it using Docker commands to a directory that I have set up here. You can see this computer is now working really hard. We've got all 12 threads, cores going at nearly 100%. So I was able to drop this Docker image just right in that I had been that I had developed on entirely different computers actually several years ago. That's really the power of Docker. I don't have to worry about getting the right versions of those libraries from this thing that I wrote three years ago. Thank you for watching this video. There'll be a couple more in this series because I have this computer for a couple of weeks before I send it back to Lenovo. So we'll go through the normal sort of things we go on this channel, except I'll be doing them from Linux directly on a 
on an actual GUI Ubuntu laptop. If you're interested in this kind of thing, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you for watching.